it's Rob Fon here and today we're going to be taking this lens and giving it the anamorphic look. Oh, the anamorphic look, what's more commonly known as the JJ Abrams look. Flares flying everywhere, anamorphic squeeze, beautiful organic bouquet in the background, everyone just going, oh, isn't that a gorgeous image? So why would you even consider changing your lens into an anamorphic lens? Well, I say anamorphic lens. What we're gonna be doing is giving it the same bokeh shape as an anamorphic lens, as well as giving it a color characteristic like a warm glow or a cool glow if you want to as well. This does give a lot of what people are looking for in anamorphic glass for the price of $20 on eBay. So this actually can be really, really good. And, and there are products that you can buy online where you can uh, get an insert for your lens, but there aren't always inserts built for the particular lenses that you have. So I thought this would be a really cool time to be able to show you guys how you could do it yourself and get a really beautiful, awesome look. Well, there's a really good reason for giving a lens an anamorphic look because it really could benefit the character of the lens. It can add to that lens. Maybe you've got a lens which it's just kind of a bit meh and it needs some extra oomph. Or maybe you have a project coming up that could really utilize a warm or anamorphic look, but you don't necessarily have the budget to rent those types of lenses in. So I thoroughly recommend this as a particular choice to be able to have that creative choice in your back pocket when you need it. Now, what's beautiful about this is once these are built, they don't have to stay inside the lens. You can take them out, store them, put them back in when you need them again. So when you make the choice to actually have an anamorphic look, but you don't have the budget for it, you can pop You can pop your little lens filter in and you're good to go. But the lens has a huge impact on the way the light enters the camera and lands on the sensor. So anamorphic lenses, and for those of you who don't know about this, have incredibly unique looks compared to their standard lens counterparts. Probably the most notable difference between normal lenses and anamorphic lenses is the way in which it squeezes the image. And then the image would go through a process called de-squeezing and it stretches the image back to a shape where everything looks normal again. Well, in the process of doing that, you elongate and change the shape of the flares and the light that's passing through the glass. Now, based on which anamorphic lens you go for, will actually change entirely the look of the anamorphic that you end up having. So you can get Kauer lenses, Schneider lenses, Carl Zeiss anamorphic lenses. So there are lots and lots of choice out there, but you have even more choice of vintage lenses out there that are very cheap to buy. And unlike their modern lens counterparts, vintage lenses are actually quite easy to open and don't require that much expertise to understand exactly how the lens goes together. And because this process is actually relatively simple, there's, there's very little chance of you breaking the lens in this process. Now, I'm gonna put a disclaimer on this. Unfortunately, I can't take any responsibility for any damaged lenses during this process. I myself, through the years, have ended up damaging some lenses with all my tinkerings. So please be careful, be warned, and do this at your own risk. So first things first, I have got what is known as a torsion tool. Um, this is specifically used for vintage lenses. Now, you could also use two screwdrivers that you have for glasses to do this, but there is a chance of the screwdriver slipping and going straight across the glass or scratching the metal, and no one really wants that. So I do thoroughly recommend these tools. They are honestly about a tenner, so they're not expensive, um, and they really make life a lot easier. So we are going to put our filter, we know we're gonna put our filter, on the inside of the lens. It's not just something you stick on, it needs to stay in position. So what we're gonna do first and foremost is 
open up the back of the lens, not the front, the back of the lens, right? And there's an important reason for that. So first things first, I'm going to get this open. Now, I don't know if you noticed, I'm actually turning the lens before I'm turning the tool. That is because it's far easier to do that and it makes a lot more sense. And your feel, once it's totally loose, that you can pull your back ring out. Most vintage lenses have a back ring. It's the innermost ring on the lens. Now, I'm using a Helios 44M. I know a lot of you have these lenses. And this is a very, very easy lens to open up, clean and maintain. This is actually as far as you need to go with deconstructing your lens. It's as simple as that. Now what we need to do, however, is create our filter. Now another option I have is a black piece of paper. Now it's got a white backing, but it's an opaque piece of paper. The reason for that is this is not going to give me a tone, where this is going to create a lot of warm light refraction inside the lens. The filter made from this won't change the characteristics of the light entering the lens. So you can try out various filter materials to see what you like, but of course they have to be very, very thin and they have to also not be able to scratch the lens on the way in. Don't put steel wool inside, it's probably a good idea. What we're going to do is we're going to need a pen or a, a marking device. So you're gonna use the back piece of glass that you've taken off your lens as your template. And then what you're going to do is you're going to draw around it to understand how big does my filter need to be. Now, the next thing you need to do is to create an oval shape within that circle. Now, it can't go too close to the top of your circle, but at the same time, you need to have, you need to have a, you need to be pretty close, otherwise you might cause an a little vignetting to your image. Now, this is just a sketch. You don't have to be too careful at this stage, but you want to get a pretty good idea of your circle shape. Now, that oval shape, once cut out, once the light passes through that, it acts as a sort of shaping tool for the light and creates more oval, long-shaped bokeh. That is exactly what a anamorphic lens ends up doing to bokeh shapes in the background. So this is where you're starting to get that creative anamorphic look in your image. So first things first, you don't cut out your circle, you cut the inner section out first. My very large, very useful scissors here. Okay, not bad. Not bad, it's not as good as my drawing. Now, next, I'm going to cut out my shape. I feel like I'm on a Blue Peter show. What art attack. Here's one I made earlier. For all of those of you who grew up on that show, big shout out. Oh, so there we have it. We have our filter. Handmade, custom crafted, and ready to go. What we then do is we pop this inside our lens, like that. You see how easy that is? That is literally all that's required. So at least with the Helios 44M, the back piece of glass that we've taken out is round on one side and flat on the other. The rounded side will be the one that faces out from the lens and the flat side will be what you place down on top of your filter. You're going to clean the back of this glass. Don't clean the front of the glass because you're gonna end up putting fingerprints back on it anyway. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna drop him in place. All right, as you can see, he's in position, he's very happy there, and we're going to put our ring back in place. Now, we haven't actually cleaned our back glass yet. That's fine, we're gonna do that as the very, very last thing we do. And you see, we got our torsion tool back again, and we're getting our ring back in place, being very careful not to scratch the glass. On some modern glass, you won't need to take the back lens out because you'll be able to utilize the piece of metal at the back of the lens as a way of holding your filter in position. 
once it's just taut, it doesn't have to be super tight. Remember, these lenses, they are very, very well made. Don't ever really over tighten lenses, even in modern or vintage glass. And now we're going to take a look at what our new lens filter has done to our image. So it was as simple as that. Basically, cutting a circle with a slightly smaller oval shaped circle through it and we were able to create some really awesome effects with the glass we already have. This is a really easy way to upgrade your lens. Now, as I said before, please, please, please be careful. Although this is a relatively simple procedure, I really could not warn you more about the dangers of opening the lenses and potentially damaging your lens beyond possible repair. However, if this is something that you either have a little bit of experience in or you're willing to give it a go by working on it very slowly over time, I thoroughly recommend this as an option to be able to spruce up some glass that you have and maybe get some new and interesting looks from your lenses. Please see my previous episode where I go through why you would even use lenses with interesting characteristics or not because it's actually really important to understand why we are using the lenses we're going to use. But having another tool in your pocket, having another choice that you can easily go to when you need to, is a great way of improving your filmmaking. The more creative choices that you have, the more ways you can tell your story in the way you want to tell it.